So there, there are other mechanisms uh, that he talks about in the book. These aren't um, thought to be as, as large of factors of wh how overpressure is generated. Uh, one of them is called, he calls aquathermal pressurization. This comes from, you know, the radioactive decay of organic materials in the earth and also the upward heat flow of the mantle. But uh, at the scale uh, of the earth and the crust, that heat flow is, is actually quite slow. And so th the idea here is that there's heat being generated, either from diffusion from the mantle or uh, inherent, you know, as a, as a reaction in radioactive decay, there's heat being generated. And if you have, you know, if you have a fluid and you heat it up, what happens? Well, it doesn't, it expands, yeah, it expands. But if it's confined to a volume, a pore, then that in turn increases the pressure. Right? So you have a fluid that's confined and you heat it up, it increases the pressure due to expansion. Okay? And so, uh, th again, this is a possibility for overpressure, but it's not typically considered to be significant because of the time scale at which you know, fluid, I mean, diffusion from the mantle is, it would take a very, very long time to have any effect. Um, and, and same with the, the temperature increase from radioactive decay. So, and then the, the last one is, you know, you actually have hydrocarbon, hydrocarbons being generated in a confined space, right? So, you know, you have thermal maturation of kerogen, which becomes oil, gas, condensate, right? And so you, you're actually generating hydrocarbons in a confined space, and that can cause a small amount of pressure increase. And so 